guys. So as Ron mentioned, my name's Willow, and I know that Willow comes with a lot of assumptions. Like, I must be uh, vegan. I'm not. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I was trying to prep for tonight, and uh, my husband calls me out to the backyard, and he says, babe, there's a dead cow next to our yard. So we live on two acres in Golden, and our our neighbor gets these cows every spring. As a matter of fact, if you ever come to our house, the password is cows are back. Because that, you can totally get into my bank account with that too. Uh, so, so the cows are back. We're so pumped. We've got these six little babies and we're all excited. And he comes running in the house and says, babe, the cow's dead outside. So we all go outside, snake season, to observe the dead cow. So we have to go tell the neighbor who's around the corner, it lives in this old house. It's one of those houses where you never know if the owner's home or if they're alive or it's a little creepy. You still have the stories from childhood when you go to meet the guy. So I walk over there and I knock on the door and I'm waiting for the guy. Now I've met him once before because the cows get out every year. They break the fence, they get out and they wander. Often they're in our front yard. So. I knock on the door. The first time I met him, he, he opened the door in a bathrobe. Today was no different, but it's 2.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> and he's wearing a pink terry cloth bathrobe. And he says to me, um, <laughs> I mean, his hair's longer than yours, sir. Um, <laughs> same, same, but different. Uh, so, so he opens the door in his, in his terry cloth pink bathrobe and he says, oh darn, well I'm on my way to the Boulder Dinner Theater right now. I couldn't possibly move a cow. And I said, yes, there's no convenient time for a dead cow, sir. <laughs> but I'm gonna need you to move it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not a vegan. I would eat that cow, but I'm afraid it may have died of less than natural causes and I'm a little concerned for my own health with that cow. With a name like Willow, you imagine that I love camping. I don't. Um, <laughs> I don't drive a V-dub bus. Clearly I do my hair and I shave my legs. So you can huck all your assumptions out the window. I'm a capitalist, love money. My parents are the hippies, they're back there. Say hi, mom and dad. <laughs> so <clears throat> being a hippie, you also would imagine that I come from Boulder. And well, if we weren't born there, we definitely lived there at some point. Do we have any Boulder people here tonight? <laughs> Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> have you met you guys? <laughs> so, so by day, I'm a psychic hairdresser. You heard that right, I'm a psychic hairdresser. And so I get a lot of randos from Boulder who have been into the ayahuasca. Have you guys heard of the ayahuasca? Yeah, it's the new hot thing. So people are tripping. And then they go a step further. When they're done tripping, it seems they're boning each other too. Now I have a, I have a total like curiosity of polyamorous lifestyle, but I'm really naive. Being a hippie, we were like the marijuana beer family. We weren't the boning the neighbors family. And so this is really new information for me and I'm really trying to work all this stuff out because again, they're making assumptions about me because of my name and because I'm a weird psychic. But I don't do drugs. I've never even seen cocaine. I'm 41 and I'm still never seen it. So here they're talking to me about tripping balls in the woods and boning their sister's brother's cousin's first sister's cousin. I don't know what these people are doing and it freaks me out. It makes me so uncomfortable and I try to kind of contain myself and listen with an open mind and a smile. And I think to myself that these people, just need to maybe chill out on the drugs and open their eyes and maybe step into the world that we're all living in, casually bored out of our minds. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to wonder again, like with the polyamorous, I've been married for nine years. So while we're not going to be swinging anytime soon, it's curious and interesting and entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> So my husband and I have this rule when we go out on a date, <clears throat> and by rule I mean we're underprepared. Neither of us can make reservations, so we sit at the bar. And some women, and I think they only belong in the movies, some women marry the guys who make reservations. <laughs> I don't think they exist in real life, these men, but mine is incapable of reservations. It's not because he doesn't love me, it's not because he's 
He, he doesn't care about it. He just is never going to be the guy that makes reservations. And that's a, an agreement we had to make at the beginning of our relationship as well. I can't make reservations. I can't even buy concert tickets. I am such a dis I can't get to a mailbox. I'm such a disaster. So we sit at the bar. And the beautiful thing when you've been in a marriage for a really long time, when you sit at the bar, you get to have a third party interpreter, otherwise known as the bartender. <laughs> And the bartender, sir, raise your hand, he is always good at interpreting your relationship while feeding you alcohol. So he actually <laughs> mirrors back your awesomeness. And suddenly you're on a date like single people and you're not having the, the typical marriage responsibility conversation when you sit across from each other. You guys know that one, right? When you're sitting across from your spouse, so how was your day at work? <laughs> Fine. How was your day at work? Fine. After nine years, you're tired of that. So we sit at the bar. So one night we're at the bar at this beautiful restaurant in Golden, a Beha. If you've not been, it's really lovely. And we're sitting at a Beha, and this lovely couple joins on the bar. And one of the cool things about the bar is you're like open to meeting new friends. And yet we're 41. We still want friends. We're still looking to make new friends. So this nice couple sits down and we're eyeing each other. And then the pancetta appetizer shows up. And we're talking and they're asking about the appetizer. We scooch it over and now we're sharing pancetta. <laughs> and as we're talking and enjoying the night and eating dinner and having drinks, we're all having a ball together. The night's coming to an end. Nobody wants it to end. So we decide to invite them back to our house. And they say, well, we're not swimmers. <laughs> Us either. See, we're not not swingers because of the judgment that I have for the Boulder people. We're not swingers probably because we're so ill-prepared. We can't make reservations is just step one of how irresponsible we are as adults. We have a six-year-old daughter, and my husband has yet to get a vasectomy. So we can't be swingers because we are still doing pull and pray in condoms. I thought if I used condoms long enough, he would get a vasectomy. It's not working. The, the, other, the other day, my daughter looks at me and she goes, Mommy, I really do want a sibling. And I looked at her and I said, well, are you praying to God? And she goes, well, why would I pray to God? And I said, well, if you want a sibling, you're going to want to pray to God. And she goes, but you're the decider. <laughs> you're, the, you're the chooser if I get to have a sibling or not. And I said, exactly. You should pray to God for divine intervention. <laughs> Which is feasible because he won't get a vasectomy. We can't make plans. We're terrible planners. We are such disasters in the planning department. So we went downtown just this last weekend to another restaurant. We actually left Golden, which is rare for us. We are very much like... Let's just go to the bar down the street. We know the people, everybody knows our name. So we decide we're gonna go venture into the big city. Have you guys been there lately, the big city, Denver? <laughs> There's no parking. You have to Uber in and Uber out. And maybe start packing, I don't know. Because you might end up dead. Just get home before 3 a.m. So, <laughs> so we Ubered into the big city. And we used to be cool. I think you guys used to be cool too. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're all so cool here in Westminster at the brewery. Um, so we used to be rad, you know, like we used to be cool before kids and like, you know, after nine o'clock. But now it's like nine o'clock hits and we're trying to get home. So we end up at the very cool restaurant that everybody's talking about. And I have to say, I'm not a big Kool-Aid drinker. Like I don't buy into the trends. I'm not interested in in the handbags and the Tony Robbins and the people everybody's signing up for. But here we are, the very rad restaurant in Denver on the fifth floor overlooking the city with all the very cool people. And I don't know if you guys have noticed the new trend and phenomenon of short shorts. And I think that there's this thing that the girls do where they look in the mirror at themselves and they think, I look great and they walk out the door in their short shorts. But what they don't notice is while they're walking, their ass cheeks are also bouncing out of the shorts. Has anybody seen this? No, I'm horrified. Like, our generation and generations before us women have been trained and taught 
to hover over a toilet seat. We only work out at gyms to make sure that we can hover over toilet seats for the rest of our lives. Because if we have to sit on that toilet seat, it's triple wrapped and disinfected prior to. So here are these girls in these short shorts and short dresses, which I'm sure for you guys is visually stimulating, but I'm about to PSA you out of this idea notion. So these girls in short shorts. Now, I'll back up a little minute. When girls pee on a toilet, when we're hovering, we can't see, we don't have eyes in the back of our head, right? We're inevitably gonna pee on that toilet seat. Now you guys were given a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> You have learned how to write your names in the snow. You can make that target and yet still you get shit on the floor. But we have an excuse. We are hovering and every public restroom has a different size, shape, level and we are constantly trying to monitor where we're supposed to go on this toilet. And it's like wiggle, wiggle, shake, shake. Am I there? I hope so. And then we get backsplash on our asses, inevitably. And I'm sorry to all the people who clean public restrooms, especially the girls' room, because it's gnarly. But here we are hovering, trying desperately to not get germs or STDs, as we've been told and taught. And now these young women, and sometimes older than they should be, are wearing short shorts. Do you know what happens after that backsplash? They're sitting on the chairs you're sitting on with their short, short butts. Ah! <laughs> Generations of us have been trying not to sit on toilet seats, and every chair you're sitting on is a toilet seat right now. Oh. To me, this is mortifying. <laughs> I spent my entire 20s trying not to get an STD, which I was lucky, because I got one of those really butchy haircuts, <laughs> and I'm already teeny tiny androgynous, and if not for Target, I wouldn't even have boobs right now. I'm so flat I make walls jealous. <laughs> With my short haircut from behind, you couldn't tell if I was a boy or a girl. And boys weren't asking me out and girls weren't either. I was just a walking question mark. I was lucky in that time period for not getting an STD. <laughs> so when you guys sit down in your future, hashtag dress like a pilgrim and wipe the seat down. <laughs> I'm Willow Bradner, thank you guys so much. the great honor and pleasure to introduce you all to Chris Zarconia, who has performed at every Howard Johnson and Colfax street corner, Whee! and he's here for you all tonight, so Hooray! just be prepared to be impressed. Thank you all.